Yeah, I was just thinking uh, just a few minutes ago, how about the gospel, the true gospel, not the pseudo gospel, you know, but the, the true yeah. gospel, the one that Paul preached, mm -hmm. the one that he said, if, if anyone preaches any other gospel that I've, uh, that I preach, even if I preach another gospel, <laughs> yeah. you know, but the, that gospel, uh, the Paul, that Paul preached is completely contrary to the wisdom of the world. Amen. It's completely contrary to the wisdom of every religious belief system in the world. It's completely contrary to it. That's, That's why right. it's, it's contrary to the carnal. I guess we can say it's the gospel is really contrary to the carnal, carnal man, to the yeah. carnal man, right? Yeah, absolutely. Man. It makes no sense at all. No. And that's why we sometimes people often fall into this other wisdom of trying to make, uh, you know, I was thinking this morning, trying to produce fruit, you know, uh, you know, produce fruit by the flesh, because to the carnal mind, that makes more sense than fruit being brought forth by the spirit, simply through right believing, simply through right believing a right message. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about we're talking about two. The Lord's really been showing me that, and it's a uh, real prevalent, uh, and I believe it's going to change, but still prevalent in a lot of Christian churches today, is really the wrong wisdom <clears throat> and the wrong gospel. Absolutely, Christian living by principles and rules that we apply in order to bring forth fruit in our own life. Yeah. You know, and that's what, you know, the Lord's really been bringing some clarity to me on that. I said, what is going, because I'll hear, I'll hear the music, I'll hear the everything, and then here comes the message. And it sounds good to the flesh. It sounds reasonable, but there's no life in it. No. There's no life in it. And it, it's just Christian principle, application, you know, Christian New Year resolutions on how to live the Christian life that's pleasing to God. And bookstores are filled with them. Absolutely. And, and see, and this, you know, is the, this is the gospel that Paul, the, Paul preached, this, the, the gospel. That's why he got so much flack for that's preaching right. the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> well, um, in uh, Galatians 5, the apostle Paul, now realize who he's talking to. He's talking about the, to the Galatians. Yeah. Allowed some Judaizers to come in and get their attention back to the law. Yeah. So this is what he's talking about. This is the context. Mm -hmm. And uh, for years before <clears throat> I could raise, I used to read chapter 5, verse 1 stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled in the yoke of bondage. Well, I used to read that when I believed sin was a um, verb rather than a noun. Mm. Um, I used to think he was saying, okay, stay away from drinking, stay away from drugs, okay? Mm -hmm. But the context of what he's talking about is the law. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage of the law. And you know that he's saying that because of what he continues to say. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. He's saying, listen, and I always like to qualify what he's saying because circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't avail anything. Right. But he's saying, if you're going to go get circumcised <laughs> to fulfill the law, then yeah. you're, Christ isn't going to profit you nothing because you're on the wrong track. Amen. He says, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he's a debtor to the whole law. So, I mean, if you want to go down that track, you've got to <laughs> realize there's 600 and something laws that you've got to obey. Okay. And he says, verse four, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, 
You are fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. You are fallen. And you know, it is so simple to see as mm -hmm. I, we read that. What does it mean to fall from grace? Mm -hmm. It means you've fallen away from the wisdom of God, the divine influence of God upon your heart, and you reverted to another belief system. Mm -hmm. where Christ can't profit you anything. The only way Christ can profit you is if you believe what he believes about you. And then the next verse says, for, I mean, this is why we hang tight. For we, through the spirit, wait. Right. Wait. For the hope of righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so the fruits of righteousness come by Jesus Christ. Right. Okay, so if we have fallen from grace, if we've fallen from God's divine influence, then we are not looking to the head to supply all we need. We're back on, I got to do this myself. And uh, you're going to have dead works. <laughs> so when we, through the Spirit, mm. wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, mm -hmm. then th what Paul is saying is, listen, don't look at your flesh, what you're producing. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I remember Oswald Chambers used to say, the minute your eyes go on to the outflow, the inflow ceases. Mm. because you see you're no longer looking to Christ you're looking at what you're doing we have yeah. to be Christ centered not self centered the flesh has no ability to transform no way us it, it's no. Christ and the scripture that came to me when you were when you were sharing was he that began a good work in you will complete it you know, and it's God that's working in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. And so our trust is in the one that lives in us. It's in Christ. It's not our flesh. It's in Christ to bring forth uh, his kingdom, his righteousness, his fruit of righteousness in us uh, as we just simply rest and trust in him and look to him. That's right. That's it, you know, and uh, but if we if we, uh, you know, begin to, you know, throw a different message, you know, and, and I was thinking about this because a lot of times uh, preachers are begin to preach a wrong message and divert from a wrong message because <clears throat> they're seeing wrong fruit or they're not seeing any fruit or whatever. They're seeing a lack of fruit. So they begin to preach a message of, well, we, we need to preach uh, certain messages to try and motivate these people to produce fruit. So then they begin to move away from the gospel into this other gospel. And we're, we're, we're well aware of that gospel because we've been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. That's right. You know, if we felt like giving was down, we would preach a series on giving to try and motivate people to give more. <laughs> that's right you know or if they were uh if they weren't witnessing enough or if we felt like they weren't witnessing enough we would then preach a series on on the need to go out and witness for jesus you know and and all these things to try and motivate people that way and uh, it sounds reasonable but it's so wrong you know yeah. Because it, it's really, it's still the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. And it's not, people get their eyes on the fruit instead of the root. They don't understand it's the root. That's the problem. It's not the fruit at That's all. Right. If it's like, I was thinking about, you know, when you look at James or you look at, you know, any of the ones that Paul addressed in the church, when they began to see uh, some some kind of yucky fruit going on in the church. Mm -hmm. Okay. They knew it was a root. It was because of a root, because they had moved away from the hope that's in the gospel. That's right. You know, and then yeah. I was thinking about also that, uh, was it second Peter one? If you lack these things, if anyone yeah. likes these things, 
if you lack the manifestation that that is such a powerful chapter yes it is second second peter one you know he says everything we have has been already been given to us in christ you know it's our deposit in us but if we lack the manifestation of, of these things it's because we've forgotten that we've been forgiven that we've yeah. been cleansed of our own sins so he goes back to what we're believing you know and what we're not believing again yeah yep it's uh it's all it, it all goes back to keeping your eyes on jesus realizing that he is the head and he's the source of all life mm -hmm. and just letting his life flow through looking to him and then also realizing what you have in christ jesus yes that you are complete in him you lack nothing everything that was in christ is in you and exactly. so it's it's um acknowledging what you have so you can use it but see that makes no sense to the carnal mind to the carnal mind that's just like how's that gonna ever work yeah if anything's gonna get done i've got to well that's because that the carnal mind is all about me yeah <laughs> the gospel is all about god and what god did in christ right and when we read i mean god had it all wrapped <clears throat> up with a nice big bow on it amen so mm. when we receive the spirit of christ we receive the exact same resurrection power that raised christ from the dead and it's dwelling in us that's right and so it's coming to fully have our eyes wide open to what we have and uh i was meditating on um second corinthians chapter 12 yesterday Mm -hmm. where i mean just check it out i mean paul had some wild experiences okay and when he says i knew a man about 14 years ago he's talking about himself mm -hmm. whether in the body or not i cannot tell i mean you can have such an experience that you don't know if you went there physically or you just had a spiritual experience but he yeah. says he was caught up to paradise and heard on un, uh, unspeakable words. And you know that word caught up, um, uh, pezo. That's the same word in Thessalonians that says um, we'll be caught up. Yeah. In the twinkling of an eye. That's good. That's to <clears throat> me, that means to yeah. snatch up quickly. Yeah. I mean, bam. Here he was, and then the next minute he, he's there, you know? One, one minute you're sipping on your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the next you're gone. And glory to God. I mean, wow. We're not to, uh, you know, we're not to follow after experiences. We're to, we're to keep our eyes on Jesus. Right. But those experiences are dynamite you know and it's just it's just a beautiful foretaste of uh of uh, what better things to come exactly amen <clears throat> okay so then we go down and it says and lest i should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh yeah. Now, you know, we've been taught, <clears throat> we were taught that God gave it him so he wouldn't get big headed. Right. But you know, that that thorn, you know, remember um, in uh, Numbers when the Lord told them to totally destroy the enemy because if they didn't, they would be pricks in their eyes and thorns in their side yeah so a thorn is an enemy okay yeah. and guess what god don't help the devil god don't send messengers of satan 
This, it clearly says it was a messenger of Satan mm. to buffet me. Okay, he had too much revelation. He had too much going on. And Satan says, hey, you know what? We got to pull this guy down a peg or two, okay? Because everywhere he goes, he's propagating this gospel and people are getting saved. So we've got to intervene here. We've got to have an intervention. <laughs> right, right. And it says, but this thing, I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. This is just such a beautiful, beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is really aggravating me. This guy, undoing everything I'm doing, is really aggravating me. So could you just take him out of the way? And, and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, you've had this sufficiency ever since you received me. Mm -hmm. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So what God is saying is, Paul, you don't need me to take this out of your way. What you need is to access the grace yes. that is more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, that's going to even work to your salvation. Yes. You know, I mean, when, hey, let me tell you something. I see a, a little guy on the school ground and the bully comes to take his lunch, his lunch money. And the kid's big brother comes up and pounds him. Don't you mess with my brother anymore. And he scurries away. Well, what if that little one stood up and rebuked that bully? Mm. And the power that was shown in that little one caused the bully to run away. Which one is more glorious? The right. one that is the little one that looks like they're weak. Mm. And he says, Paul, when you're weak, that's when you're strong. Yeah. My glory rests upon you. Now, just look. Look. I mean, look at the revelation Paul just told us about in the scripture. Mm -hmm. He was caught up to the third heaven. He mm. was caught up to paradise. I mean, he was the number one preacher of the gospel. And yet, he didn't know this. Yeah. You know, I mean, people don't ever think, you know, all there is to know about the truth. Even the Apostle Paul, with his, with his great revelation, he was a target by Satan. To bring him down. Yeah. And he sought the Lord three times. Lord, please take this away from me. Take this. He didn't know he had the power to overcome it within himself. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. Mm. He says, when, when the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for, the, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, I realized this is a Kavor moment. This is a moment, remember, Kavor, to braid your thoughts together with his thoughts, and he'll cause you to rise up like the eagle. He'll just pull you out of the miry clay by his awesome thoughts when right. you begin to think his thoughts. So God speaks this word to Paul, and look at Paul's reaction. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes. He had it all the time, 
but he didn't know what he had. And yet he had all these great revelations. And yet he didn't know the simple truth that caused him to glory. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm. Wow. Just a little word totally changed Paul's perspective on how to look at suffering. Yeah. Huge. And that was what the Lord wanted to, you know, change was his perspective. He had a wrong perspective. Absolutely. Instead of saying, take it, take it out, take it away. Yes. The Lord gave him his perspective, you know, which was, hey, when you're weak, that's when my strength is realized in, in and through your life. I was going to say one thing on that, on that um, thorn to, you know, I looked up the, um, it says Mount, Mount Sinai that we haven't come to Mount uh, Sinai, but mm -hmm. Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. And that word Sinai actually means thorny place in the, in Hebrew. Yeah. It means the place of the thorny It literally means thorny place. So yeah. um, it was these, I think, was it the Judaizers, the, yes. the legalists, those that were continuing right. to follow Paul? Uh, he's preaching grace, which is totally radical from what he preached before. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Absolutely. opposite. And, uh, and here, but here he's uh, being followed. And really, and see, I've been in Corinthians too. It's interesting because I, I may be doing something tonight on 2 Corinthians 10 which kind of goes along with that where you know he was you know he was uh being accused of ah this guy's walking in the flesh he don't know what he's talking about you know it, you know they were accusing paul of you know of not being an apostle not of walking in the flesh and and all these things and so he was totally he was totally under you know i mean he just was completely under that the element, the thorn, the thorn <laughs> element. Well, this. Yeah. this connects with it in mm -hmm. Isaiah 55 <clears throat> when the Lord says, yeah. we're at verse 10, for the, as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but yeah. watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and bud. Yeah that it may give seed to the sower, bread to the eater, so shall my word <clears throat> be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein to I sent it. And when I read that, I'm thinking Jesus. Mm. Okay? Yeah. I've sent my word. Okay? Yes. And then it goes on to say, now, once you receive the word, ye shall go out with joy. Yeah. Once you receive this new wisdom, this is what's going to change. You'll go out with joy. You'll be led forth with peace. Mm -hmm. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you in singing. Mm. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Mm. And instead of the thorn, shall come up the fir tree two mm -hmm. trees baby they're the two trees in the garden the thorn which is the law right or right. the fir tree which is an evergreen yes and it's like a green olive tree planted in the house of the lord and its leaves don't wither oh my goodness it's green 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 mm. like the glory of the lord the glory of the law was you'd have a bright moment <laughs> and then you went into utter darkness like right. Moses, you know, they put the veil on the face so that the people couldn't see that which was going to be dissolved because that light diminished. Right. I thought for the longest time they put the, the veil on the face because the brightness was so bright 
to, you know, shield the brightness, but that's not what it says. It says <laughs> that he, they put a veil on his face because they didn't want to show that which was going to be dissolved because Baby. that glory. Yeah. Baby. It'd go up, the glory would come on, but then it would dissipate. And that's the way of the life of the law. Yeah. You can achieve something and feel, woo, thank you, I'm on top of the mountain top. Somebody yeah. cuts you <laughs> off, you scream at them, and you're right back at the bottom starting all over again. Because yeah. your righteousness is depending upon your works. Yeah. I was looking at, you know, the trees of the field clap their hands. Uh, in, in the Passion, it says the trees uh, of the field will applaud. And why do they applaud? Because you're finally getting it. You're yes. finally receiving more. And creation already knows. See, yes. creation is looking for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're, right. they're fully aware of what's going on. That's right. And they have more discernment than man does. You know? So it's just like, it, I, I always tell people, the next time you look at your cat or your dog in its eyes, just know this, your cat or dog is saying, wake up, dummy. Yeah. And yeah. receive the word of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> because, you know, all of creation is groaning, right? Yeah. I mean, they're looking, they're looking for it. And uh, and so when we when we receive the true word from God, that God is for us, not against us, that our righteousness is from him, that God does love us, you know, and his and his mercy is great towards us, and he just wants the best for it. When we just received, like you said, when we receive the word, which is Christ. Yes. And all that he is, then instead of thorns and thistles, we'll begin to manifest, you know, the abundant fruit and the glory of God, you know. That's right. That's right. And it goes back to what you've been, what we've been saying about it's about right, right seeing, right believing, right receiving. Yeah. And just letting that the word and the seed of that word just just grow and do its thing yes. in our life. You know, I was sharing with somebody yesterday. Um, we were we were going over how to study um, mm. <clears throat> and how to use the strongs. And you know, a lot of people don't know how to do that. Right. And that is so important. Yeah, we need uh, to, to be able to use the tools at <clears throat> your um, disposal. And uh, I was looking at, um, I wanted to pick a word in the King James that is so not like what it sounds. And uh, I chose Hebrews 12, 2. Well, let's start at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing that we also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Mm hmm like the faith, the sin. Right. So that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Yeah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Now, it doesn't say our faith. Our is in there, but it's been added. Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who for the joy, now here it is right here. Mm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Yeah. Okay. He had, he had a vision. He had a view of what this cross was going to do. Mm. And it, it, it captivated his heart and his mind because he, was, he set his face like flint to go to Jerusalem. Mm. He knew what he was going there for. He knew he was going to set the captives free. That's what he had on his mind. Mm -hmm. It says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Mm. Now, until I studied that word before right. I knew grace, I thought he despised the shame. He felt he felt the shame. He hated it. That's not what that word means. Mm. It means to disesteem 
or mm. to think little of. Mm. Okay, now yep. look, yep. you've got the cross and you've got the effects of the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus kept his mind on the glorious result of what he was doing so that he looked at this compared to this he looks at this suffering which was immense but he looks at millions of people coming out of bondage and becoming children of god just like jesus mm. he counted it as nothing yeah that's good. That goes along with what you were saying about the thorn in the flesh, really. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And See, what, Paul, same... what, Paul, what Paul was doing was thinking too much of it. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, he was thinking too much of the persecution and too much of the of the accusation, false accusation, and all these things. He was he was waking it, making it way bigger. You know, which which then caused him to see it as a mountain and say, Lord, please take it away from me. That's right. That's right. You know, Paul said, and I'm trying to think these present sufferings. Let's see. Romans 8.18. Let me look. And that can really apply to a lot of things, right? I mean, how many other things can that apply to? You yes. know, where, now here where, Paul, where we actually magnify whatever thing in this temporal world. You know, the there was a, a song we used to sing, Jan. It was Mike's favorite song, but then we stopped singing it because all the words weren't good. But the name of the song was, I've made you too small in my eyes. Mm. I have made you too small in my eyes. But then it says, oh, Lord, forgive me. And that's when we dropped it. Uh, so because we don't we don't ask the Lord to forgive us, He's already forgiven us everything that we'll ever do. But the the title of that song is still true. We've made you too small in our eyes. And remember, I've said it so many times. Oswald Chambers said, Israel turned to idols when they starved their imagination of God. Mm. I mean, just stop. Listen, you look at Isaiah and you see how he's talking about how he he um, formed the seas in the palm of his hands mm. and how the mountains are a drop in the bucket. Mm. OK, you read this and what you're doing is you're magnifying God. Yeah, you can't make God any bigger than what he is, mm. but you can make him bigger in your own heart, in your own eyes, by meditation on right. how great he is. How great and is so, it? you know, the old adage, you make a mountain out of a molehill. Well, shoot, stop looking at the problem and look at the answer. I love that. I love that. And um, well, that song, you know, we sing, how great is our God. Oh, I love that. Every yeah. time you sing that song, it's less like, you know, it lifts you up. It's like it just totally yes. lifts you up. Absolutely. Everything in this world. So. Yep. Now look at what Paul said in Romans 8:18. 8, he says, "For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to yeah. be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us." Yes. See, he's he's looking. It's kind of like I see uh, the balance, a balance, a scale. And you've got the suffering on one side and the glory on the other. And the side that the glory's on is weighted all the way down. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, look, it's, there's nothing to be compared. Look, glory, suffering. Glory. <laughs> and so that's what captivates you. And that's what, just right. like it's telling us in, in Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus. How did Jesus do it? It's saying, yeah. how did Jesus get through his suffering? Mm. 
Mm. He made a lot out of the glory and little out of the suffering. Yes. And so it's saying you've got to do the same thing. Yes. You've got to keep your eyes above uh, where you're seated at the right hand of the God, of God in Christ Jesus. And yes. keep your affections there. So the things on the earth grow strangely dim. Yeah, that's awesome. Good word. I was thinking in, in Acts um, where they had, uh, they had been threatened not to preach in the name of Jesus. Yes. Uh, I want to find that scripture because what they did was immediately go in and get together and lift their voice to the Lord and begin to acknowledge who he was, you know? And it says, it says in Acts 4, 24, it says, well, Acts 23, it says, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, who has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And then he goes on to, to get together to acknowledge, you know, all the promises of God and all, the, all who God is, you know. And uh, yeah. that is how they were able to receive, uh, you know, strength. And it says, <clears throat> and then they said, after they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So it's just, uh, it's like you said, it's, it's a, immediately lifting up, right? Set your eyes on things above yeah. and all the things of this earth. Yeah. You know? And God, you know, God has to, he, he wants our hearts to be prepared for yeah. this because, listen, we, we live in a place where we haven't really experienced a lot of persecution, you know? Yeah. And, but uh, not like they have, but we could very well in yeah. the future. It's a very poss possibility. And, yeah. and we need to know, you know, that, hey, no persecution, no, no amount of whatever comes against Nothing, you. Nothing can greater, separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ. Greater than God's now, love. I wanted to greater. point something out. Yeah. We looked at two scriptures, the one in Romans 8 and the one in uh, 2 Corinthians 12. And in 2 Corinthians 12, Paul didn't have this revelation. And yet in Romans, he does. And you think because 2 Corinthians comes after Romans, it's later. But in actuality, um, 2 Corinthians was written in 57. And Romans was written between 57 and 58 so, AD. So Romans came after Corinthians. Yeah. So, I mean, we can see the growth of Paul. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, Desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Mm. Just growing, growing up into the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because when we grow up into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're growing up into the knowledge of who we are. So when you come to know him, you're coming to know yourself because as he is, so are we. Well, that Hebrews 12 is so powerful. I'm still on this too. You know, yeah. about this uh, compounds with a great cloud of witnesses. Yes. You know, those that, that have gone on before us are in yes. that cloud of witness. They're in that, that, that um, the, uh, the arena, you know. Yes. And, uh, yes. We're still here, but it says, um, um, lay aside every every weight. And I like what you said, the sin, the yes. sin. And what is the sin? The lie. The lie, okay. believing the lie over the truth, right? It's, it's not believing Christ. 
right? Uh, does easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that's set before us. And we know also that this race always begins with the it is finish line. You know, uh, it's not like the typical race start line and then you finish, but it yeah. really begins with the the finish line that it that's is finished right. doing what Christ has already accomplished and uh, and what He's doing in and through us. He's the He's the author and finisher of our faith, and then and then looking to Him, and I love that. Um, despising the shame that's such a revelation there and we need to you know when we're talking we really need to teach teach the church how to study the bible exactly because a lot of people really don't know how to well, study somebody the called me and said you know you know what i you know i want to know how you get your messages how do you how, i said it's very simple you just have to use the tools that are available to you Mm -hmm. and uh so you know that's very important if people don't know you know that wouldn't be bad to have a class right you know, on uh i think it would be study the bible yeah i think it would be uh, i think there'd be a lot of response with that to be honest because i think a lot of people want to know and you know they just don't know how to how to get started you know and um it's simple, simple tools, and it's coming into right understanding through understanding what words really mean, you know, That's right. and it's not and it's context, you know, it's about reading, understanding the word in context and all these things and um, not just opening the Bible and, you know, say, well, what's my scripture for the day? You know, Jesus, yeah. uh, Judas went and hung himself. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like that one. I'll open another one. Go thou and do likewise. You yeah. Know? It's like, you know, <laughs> there's a yeah. better approach to, to it. And really, if people really understand, like in one of my videos lately, I, I said, you know, people want to know why I stick with the King James Bible. Uh, mm. The King James Bible is the only one that you can reference through the Strongs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I study, I, when I'm studying, I'll go to different Bibles, Yeah. but I keep my, my core uh, word in King James language because I know the words and like, let's take the word um, uh, moderation. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Yeah. You know, what does that mean? But what it means is moderation means uh, your steadfastness. Mm. Um, where is that scripture? Let your moderation be known unto all men. Philippians, right? Oh, let's see. Let me see here. Yeah, the Lord is at hand. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It says in... Uh, Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Yes. I'm just looking what I've got written here. Rejoice. I've got written here. By rejoicing, joy becomes a personal reality. Mm. rejoicing is the fruit of joy mm. okay uh oh my goodness when i think of the old ways the old way praise him praise him praise they're saying praise him not because you feel like praising him but because it's the thing to do to get a breakthrough right it's like yeah. fake it till you make it. Me exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Rejoice, joy. Remember in uh, James one, count it all joy mm -hmm. when you fall into diverse temptations. Yeah. That count it. Let me turn there. We're staying. We're staying in uh, Philippians, but I just want to go to James. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Okay, higomai. That word count, higomai, is to lead with official authority. Mm. Count it all joy. When, listen, if you've got joy in your heart, mm -hmm. it's because you know something. Mm -hmm. If you can rejoice in tribulation, it's because you know something. Mm -hmm. Because you know that all things are going to work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Right. So if this, listen, if this thing that is a, a temporary pain in the neck is going to work to my salvation and it's going to make me stronger, then why should I go through it miserable? I'm going to go through it joy joyous if I'm in the reality of God's reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so joy, joy is the voice of faith. Mm. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. When you know it's all going to work out all right. I just see that little kid. I don't know if you ever seen that on Facebook. That little kid, so soft, such a cute little face. It's all going to be all right. <laughs> Such a soft little face. It's all going to be all right. <laughs> if you know that, imagine, just stop and imagine going through life, knowing that everything is going to work for your good. Right. What an attitude. Amen. Right. And so he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Mm. let your moderation be known unto all men that word moderation means calm temperance exercising restraint mm. okay why are you going listen why are you going to exercise uh restraint and be calm and temperate it's the mm. next verse the Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Is that our reality? Yes. If, if that's not our reality, we're like, ah, what am I going to do? Mm. But when you know that he's a friend that's sticker closer than a brother, that he's right there, he's a very present help in time of trouble then you can exercise calm temperance because you know what? The Lord's going to get me through this. Yes. And those that observe, stop and think about it. You're in your bubble of love, God's love for you, and you're reacting from your perspective of, hey, God's right here with me. The person, the unbeliever, don't see God. Is all he sees is the manifestation of your trouble. And it blows his mind that you are calm in the midst of this mess. It, it, their brain goes tilt because they don't understand. How can this be? Why aren't you just blowing your lunch? Because we know something that they, they don't know. Exactly. It says... Be careful for nothing. Of course, we know that means anxious. Mm -hmm. Don't be anxious or afraid of anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, that means you ask, and because you believe, you receive, you thank him that you already got it. Right. Let your request be made known unto God. Now, it's saying, and the peace of God. Now, it's if this is your mindset, that God is at hand. And because God is at hand, I'm not going to be concerned. I am going to um, be calm and tender. Mm -hmm. Right. And because I'm in this, this place of knowing the truth, 
the peace of God that passes all understanding mm-hmm. shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Remember in 20, what is it, 27, Isaiah 27, 3? Mm-hmm. He will keep him in perfect peace. shalom, peace, mm-hmm. whose mind is stayed, is wow. fixed on him. Yes. Your peace, our peace, is connected with our mind being stayed on Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Mm. If our mind is moved away, and what did Paul say in uh, 2 Corinthians 11? I fear, lest as the serpent beguiled Eve, Mm. you shall be removed. Mm-hmm. from the simplicity which is in Christ Jesus. So you got it all going on as long as Jesus is the center. <laughs> yeah. That's but right. It, you allow a word to come and you have to realize that as God speaks a word and it can illuminate us like it did in, in 2 Corinthians 12 for Paul, when he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in we- your weakness. Oh, boy, it just exploded in Paul. And Paul grabbed it, and, and, and it was life to him, okay? The same way he received that word and was elevated, mm. the enemy wants to bring a word. Oh, yeah. And if you braid your thoughts together with it, it will cause you to go crashing down like a lead balloon. Yeah, it says on down there, it says, uh, and um, um, there's so much here. But in the Passion, it says in, in verse 8, it says, So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic, real, honorable, and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy merciful and kind fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of god praising him always follow the example that we've imparted to you so he's again it's where your mind is fixed what you're meditating on what you're thinking on as a man thinks in his heart so is he you know that's right and uh it's all through scripture it's where your mind goes that's where your life goes i mean that's what's gonna that's what's gonna manifest so in verse 9 it says those things that which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the god of peace shall keep and the god of peace shall be with you yeah you know, when you're walking in the word mm-hmm. you're walking i mean look god light peace life love, it's all synonymous okay yeah. <laughs> so i mean if you're living in god you're living in all of this stuff it's just, it's the fruit of the life you know yeah that's right that's good good words good words thank you lord amen janet do you have anything you'd like to share I, I muted you. <laughs> I can you unmute yourself real quick? I just had started getting some cross noise. So oops. She took herself out. No, there you go. There it is. No, there. I'm just I'm just enjoying the word. Yes. We see Lisa's. I don't see Lisa, but I'm glad you're with us, Lisa, today. I think you might need to. Thank you. I'm here. I'm just a wreck, so I didn't want to go on. But I'm glad I came on with the word is really good today, like always. We understand. We're we're, uh, praying with you, you know, that the supernatural comfort of the Holy Spirit is there with you comforting you in in this time and uh you know god's god's still on the throne hey lisa yes 
Kim sends her best to you. She feels so bad for you, but she knows the love you have for your husband. But she said he she said he's in a better place too. Yeah, it really is. He is. And it, it's hard to go through, but you're you're a survivor. Yeah. And this words, they truly help. It it's truly every time I come on, it's always something that's going on in my life. Amen. Amen. And I know God is so good. He is. And I'm blessed for being on here and blessed to have you guys in my life. Even though we're far apart a little bit, but I feel closer when we're on. Amen. We're blessed to have you too. Amen, Lisa. You're a trooper, baby. Yes, I she am is. So, I, am just, I am so proud of you. And you blew my socks off a few times. Let me tell you, your boldness and I mean, just tenacity. <laughs> praise God. And, uh, you know, you couldn't have done more than what you did. So I am just so thankful. And uh, Lisa, you've come a long way. Lisa, you, Lisa, you have come a long way. Thank you so much. I feel like I have from many years of being yes. in church I was so immature and, and then you know just as the years go by and just continually wanting to serve God you know he does change your life he helps you to really grow and you you know see it manifesting until you know these changes come about and how you handle yourself in these different situations and I um, truly am grateful for the grace that he has bestowed upon myself and my family um, giving me chance after chance and just wanting to see me grow because he loves me that that much. Yes, Amen. Does. Amen. Just receiving, sitting at the feet of Jesus and receiving his word. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing more, more desirable, more delightful than to hearing just to be sitting at his feet and just listening to every word he wants to tell us. He just Amen. don't realize. You know, and I know that my circumstances are not what I've wanted, but I believe, like I've always said, things happen for a reason. And I know the moment that things were happening that he wanted me to really bear down. It's like my whole entire being soul to be with him because he he loves me that much. <laughs> and even though there are sacrifices being made and, you know, what have you, <clears throat> nothing nothing more of a sacrifice than he did when he went up that cross and all that torturous times that he went through because he loved us that much amen so amen. that's what i'm looking at you know you i remember mom saying you know you got to take yourself out and look at other people because the moment that you look at you that's when you fail you just amen. gotta look because there's a lot more people worse off than you yeah and that's amen. what helps and, you know, there's a scripture that just came to my mind in uh, Psalm, I think it's 34. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And uh, this, this really applies to you. I really yeah. feel that this is you. Um, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continually in my mouth and my soul will make her boast in the Lord. Now, this is not like, okay, I've got to bless the Lord at all times. I've no. got to praise in my mouth at all times. No, this is the result of living in the reality. Yes. Mm. The result of living in God reality makes me bless the Lord at all times. Absolutely. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. Mm. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. Mm. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now that word humble means depressed in mind or circumstance, needy or poor. So as we go through our trials, and we keep our eyes set on Jesus. And we know that all things are working together for the good. 
we make our boast in the Lord, the people around us, all of those that don't know the Lord are watching and it makes them glad. Why does it make them glad? Because it gives them hope in their situation. Yeah. Amen. You can go through this in this situation. I can go through it. Mm -hmm. And then it says, the next verse is, oh, magnify the Lord with me. There it's you go. an invitation. Yeah. Come on. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. That word means their faces became radiant. Girl, you are a light in darkness. And as you continue to stay in the reality of eternal life, yes, you know, Al, Al is not dead, okay? No. He's no. more alive now than he's ever been, and he is having the time of his life. And if he could say to you, he'd say, Lisa, I can't believe how good this is. It's so I wonderful. Go yeah. shed any tears for me. And as that stays your focus, that is the reality. Amen. Then you rejoice in the Lord and people will wonder where they get their strength, your strength mm -hmm. and they're going to want to come and join you. Yes, absolutely. Amen. Word. Amen. That's such a good word. I yeah, love amen. that. That's so powerful when you said, Al is not dead, he is alive. Yes. Uh, that is so powerful. Yeah. yeah. So powerful because it's the truth. And it's the Holy <laughs> Spirit, you know, that acknowledges that. It's just like we're not those that have no hope, you know. That's right. In this world, you know. Uh, I mean, people lives, we live. There are Christians won't say that. Yeah. They won't say that. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the truth. They need to. I mean, Jesus said, He that believeth in me will never die. That's what he said. So what are we doing saying people? I never say, right. I never say that my mom or my dad are dead. Are you kidding me? They're more alive than I am. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And they just Amen. all keep congregating up there. Amen. And I'm going, I can't believe this. I was the first to come into this thing. And I most I'd be the last one to go out. <laughs> <laughs> I would say they're praying. They're praying for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They're, up, they're praying for us, rooting yeah. us up. You know, surrounded by that cloud of witness. You know. I tell you, whenever, like sometimes, um, I got a picture right here of my dad. Okay. This is a picture of my dad. Can you see it? There he is. Yep. Okay, that's when he was in the uh, Royal Air Force. And sometimes I'll come in here and I, I'll look. And when I look, okay, the first thing I think of is dad's not here. Okay? Yep. And my heart wants to sink. And then immediately I think, oh, man, he's having such a blast with Ma and Steve and Vanessa. Oh, now I got to be careful I don't get jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, you know as I've said this so many times as you think mm. so do your emotions go yeah yeah I mean your emotion your our emotions don't have to be like yo-yos right if right. our mind is stayed on him and we stay in God reality mm -hmm. we can be consistent because, right. hey, everything in this world is subject to change, but God never changes. So I'm going to hook my little red wagon to him. Amen. 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 And stay consistent. Amen. Uh, Paul, Paul, Paul says, uh, he says, uh, Philippi in Philippians 1, he says, I'm hard pressed in 123. Yeah. Uh, between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Yeah. 
Nevertheless, oh, people forget that. He said it's <laughs> far better. It's far better, he says. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. Right. And it's just like, you know, it's 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 really far better to be with Christ. Those that are with Christ now are, are, are in a better place. That's what he's Have saying. Have you ever heard of a person that wants to go back? Never. No. No, uh, they go and they and they, and Jesus goes, you're gonna have to go back. And they're like, no, I don't want to go back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you're not done. The mission is not done yet. Yep. Oh yeah. my goodness. Praise the Lord. Jen, did you was you gonna say something? No, no. Okay. No, I well, this has been good. This has been good. Yes, Amen. it has. Absolutely. Good words, good words today. Magnify the Lord. Make God bigger than yes, as He is. Amen. Make Him who He is. You know. Yes. And it's just like I love that. Because it's like you said, um, you know, people don't have that reality. They no. just like mm -hmm. if you're not into the scriptures, you can't captivate the reality of it the way it is now. Because even though He was there, He's here now, and a lot of people don't see that. Right. They see that reality that, you know, it's just like in the word and he can't be here. It's like, it's like almost like they think it, it's not an existing thing, but it is. Yeah. I tell him today, God is, is just because, you know, you read the word and those things happen. It doesn't mean that he's not here now. He's with us every day. He has never left us nor forsake us. Amen. 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 The, you know, the one thing I did want to say is that when, Bill told me about what happened. Now I said he got the victory. Amen. You know he he's walking in victory and he's he is is there and and what he sees is so far beyond what we see. Oh, can't even comprehend the beautifulness. I'm sure. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This keeps getting better and better from here. Be Amen. Yeah. And we have the deposit, the Holy Spirit is the earnest, right? The earnest of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just thing. stop and think about it. If what we got is just the down payment, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what is what we got coming? Amen. I mean, wow. Oh, glory. And see, now this kind of talk gets me excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you want to beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> All of us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, let's. We want to pray for. Let's pray for Lisa real quick. Yes. Turn on. Thank you, Jesus. Father. Thank you for Lisa. Thank you for your heart, Lord, and uh, I thank you, Lord, that for the Holy Spirit of the Comforter that comforts her in the in during this time and actually giving her comfort and encouragement and just knows the reality of mm -hmm. of you and where Al is right now Lord God and he yeah. is fully alive yes, fully Lord. blessed fully healed fully whole yes, thank you Lord in that cloud of witness Lord yes, thank Lord. you Lord thank you Jesus I feel your presence now Lord thank, thank you Lord for the Lord. comfort of the Holy Spirit and, and greater things yet to come, Lord God. Thank you for your wisdom and your love and your heart, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm feeling blessed. Amen. <laughs> and Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. I just feel like God's just wrapping his arms around you right now. So that's oh, awesome. Lord. We're here for you, Lisa. Anytime you need to, you know, any of us, just don't hesitate. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Absolutely. Amen. Well, we love y'all. Love, love you. you. Okay. Have a blessed day. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.